Hello, hello. So, uh, can you hear my voice? If there's anybody, please let me know. <coughs> All right, so, <coughs> hello, this is Junichiro Rikawa, and this is the weekly live uh, Houdini tutorial live <coughs> called as Houdini Algor Algorithmic Live. This is 119th episode. And the theme today is to create a procedural <coughs> homing missiles or lasers, uh, so called eternal circus <coughs> um, effect or animation uh, using Houdini. So, what that what it is that it's just a bunch of missiles homing to some specific targets like what you're seeing right now <clears throat> and I'm gonna build this system using a SOP solver together with some simple really simple algorithm uh, the algorithm that I'm gonna use to um, implement this system is called boys the agent based system particle system which uh, <coughs> is used to create assimilations of flocking bird or school of fish or something like that <coughs> so i'm going to use the same system pretty much the same ones to simulate the missiles okay and uh, the term Eternal Circus comes from a animator called Itano san Seems like his was the he was the legend <coughs> in animation field, and he made the method to show a missile, the homing missiles, something like these. If you have seen these before. And the way it shows is also controlling the camera, like perspective and positions and directions, as well as the missile. So I'm also going to control the camera view as well a little bit so that <clears throat> it follows the, the target as well as controlling some perspective to make it look more dynamic okay but it's pretty simple the things that I'm doing really simple if you look from the top view it's looks like this okay so you have a place where you are starting off the missiles and all the missiles are following to this target and as soon as it tr uh, got close to the target the missile got too close to the target then it just explodes or <clears throat> uh, the missiles itself has a life count and if the time has passed then it also explodes <clears throat> uh, if it even if it doesn't reach to the target something like that okay so those are some rules that i added <clears throat> to make it mm, somehow realistic okay and in the end i'm also going to bring all the system all the animations that i made in houdini for a quick uh, for a quick shading done in blender <coughs> okay since the blender has a ev which is more like a real-time shading uh, engines in pvr uh, which is in my opinion is better than the preview <coughs> uh, shading in Houdini so I'm gonna I'm just gonna use the quick shading in Blender <coughs> because it looks better out of the box all right <coughs> so that's what I'm gonna do today from scratch okay right. so let's do that so let's start off with the new file for Houdini <clears throat> and let's plan out where to start 
So <clears throat> first of all, I do I need a target which flies around the space, uh, <clears throat> trying to avoid hitting front missiles. So let's create that first. Then I'm going to create the missiles, bunch of missiles, or maybe the launcher for those missiles or lasers uh, to <clears throat> launch these uh, bullets or rockets. <clears throat> and and the rest, I'm going to implement the void uh, algorithms to the missile so that it will follow the target and also add some event to explode based on the collisions or based on the lifetime. <clears throat> and I guess that's pretty much it. And I'm going to add a bunch of parameters to control the way uh, the rockets follow, <clears throat> the missiles follow the target so that you can customize how the trail looks. Sometimes uh, the, if you want to create the um, laser looking like trails, maybe you want to make it uh, straight in terms of the trail and certainly it just uh, rotates to a specific directions <clears throat> like 30 degrees or 45 degrees uh, based on the angle based on the really straight angle <clears throat> that might give you a feel of lasers instead of missiles so let's try to create that customization as well since we are using a procedural system all right, so stop by making the background dark and start off by creating some <clears throat> target which flies around the space randomly. I'm okay, just make it random so in any way is fine. Mm, so one thing that I could think of is just use a solver to make the target move around the space randomly. <clears throat> That's fine. Or <clears throat> I could also use some uh, specific path to let the target fly around based on those paths. So maybe I'll do the latter method. I'm just gonna try to create a random path first. Uh, so that I can keep the path within some range, the bounding box. So let's say I'm going to use attribute wrangle, <clears throat> make it detail, and you're going to use the noise function to create a random path first. So <clears throat> any noise function is fine, I guess, uh, but in order to make it pretty random, Maybe there are some uh, nice functions that I could use. I would probably use either noise or curl noise. Let's try with the curl noise. So first, <clears throat> starting off with nothing, and I'll just create a number of points based on the number of frames. So one point it corresponds to one of the frame here. So <clears throat> number of points is frame end. And I am going to create a loop to create a bunch of points with the number of frame end. Now <clears throat> I'm going to create a seed value uh, to in order to use it for a curl noise. <clears throat> mm. And for the X, Y, and Z for the seed, I'm going to use this I value for <clears throat> in some way. Okay, so first I'm going to create a F value by multiplying I by some multiplication make it scaled <clears throat> it could be that i is too big in order to use it for their coal noise seed so let's make it small by creating some slider multiplication 
I'm going to try with 0.1 first. Okay, then you could say FFF. Now, I think it's also a good idea to randomize or make the X, Y, and Z value different. So I'm going to add some random values here. <clears throat> Just any value. All right. And pr probably also would like to have some additional seed, float seed value so that I can also control the randomness by myself. All right. And let's make the range pretty big. Okay, and also add this to each of the component. It's not really necessary, I think, but just to make sure I get enough randomness for every X, Y, and Z. Okay. Oop. This has supposed to be one, this is supposed to be big numbers. Okay, <clears throat> so now I have a seed. I can now create some noise value. So based on it, mm, let's try using quill noise, see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna call this nval quill noise. And seed. Now, call noise is often used for a vector field creations within some volumetric uh, boundings. Also. But I'm going to use this as a position to see how it looks. So, <clears throat> after having this, I am going to create a position by multiplying n value by some bounding box. Uh, size. So let's make the bonding box maximum to 100. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, then add point to that position. Okay, so I have now a bunch of points uh, in a space and let's see how it looks like when it connected when it's connected so I'm gonna use add node to connect each points one by one in an order and that looks like this it's a bit too jaggy maybe I need to scale this down a little bit So it looks like this. Not bad, but there are some kinky points like these, like these, which I don't really like, I think. Let's see what happens with noise. See what happens. It looks a bit smoother. There are some turns that goes really narrow. So um, I might want to fix those points, but overall looks fine. Yeah. So if you are using noise, <clears throat> the range is in between 0 0.0 to 1.0. But most of the time, the minimum is like 0.3 and the maximum is like 0.7. So let's fix this range a little bit. First, I'm going to subtract it by 0.5 for a both x, y, and z so that the range will be in between minus 0.5 to 0.5 for all x, y, and z and then multiply by 2. <clears throat> okay, now it's been centered. And now I might want to refit this a little bit using fit 01. And the range is in between the range that I want to change is in between 0.3 to point no 
shouldn't use point fit zero one, but I should use fit itself and the range that I'll convert it to is from 0.3 to 0 0.72, 0 0.02, 1.0. See what happens. Oop, didn't work because this is this doesn't work with the vectors. So probably I need to do like this. still doesn't work <clears throat> oh I realized that this is not the right range but since I have made a negative value I think I shouldn't should just remove that okay and I think I dragged some okay looks a bit weird Okay, how's this? And okay, I'm missing the end value. Okay, so that looks fine, I guess. It's been clamped a little bit on this side, so maybe I should make it point two. Yeah, a little bit better. Okay, let's just go with this. And let's see how it changes by changing the seed. Okay, so it does change the path. Yup. Okay, that's good. Now, let's also fix a little bit of uh, those kinky curve and as well as some weird wiggling um, <clears throat> movement. Not sure why this happens here. Maybe based on the scale. Not sure. Maybe due to the due to this one. Yeah, maybe. No, maybe not. I'll just gonna get rid of this one. It's not really necessary. And to fix this, I'm just going to use smooth. Okay. And also make this smooth a little bit bigger so that I will have more smoother on these. Uh, t a bit too narrow <coughs> curve, or when the curvature is really uh, big. Maybe in those cases, <clears throat> I could use attribute blur. Let's see what happens. Oh, still had these problems. This is a bit too smooth to the, too smoothing out, I guess. Mm. Oh wow. Just gonna go with these and try to make the scale a little bit smaller. May try to change the seed. Alright. Oh well. <clears throat> Let's just go with this. <clears throat> And so let's say this is the path that the target flies around. So starting from the start points, go around these paths, go along with these paths. Now, so the target movement, it's not really restricted to this way. It's anyway, it's fine. So it's based on your favors. And let me also make it back the negative value so that it'll be placed on the center okay all right so 
let's create a point which runs on top of this curve which is going to be the point where you're going to place the target and I'll make a really simple geometry it looks like a plane so circle starting with the circle make it square and use extrude extrude it on one distance and then also increase the inset like that make it <coughs> like a half diamond shape then maybe also close the back open the front then squash it on y direction and let's make it as a plane for now you can replace this with something others later but for the testing i think it's fine yeah something like that okay so let's create some points on a curve <clears throat> so how should we do that I could create a point wrangle or maybe not the point wrangle but uh, primitive wrangle I guess primitive wrangle and just sample the point position on a curve <coughs> by getting the point based on the u value so in order to do that uh, I also would like to get the tangent vector as well as a normal direction a perpendicular direction as well for a sample for reference so let's have let's create orient along curve to create both tangent vectors as well as a up vectors the tangent vector is going to be created as a normal <coughs> And up vector is being created as a perpendicular vector value, I think, like that. Okay, and I'm gonna use it to orient the <coughs> plane which runs on top of this curve. So let's create the point based on the timeline. So gonna convert the t current time to a value between 0 to 1 meaning I'm gonna uh, normalize the value <coughs> normalize the frame value to 0 to 1 so the current frame divided by the end frame will give you a value in between 0 to 1 and now I'm gonna use this to sample the curve to use that to, to do the sampling, I could use prim UV. And there's only one <coughs> primitive, so you can say zero. Wait, I also need to specify the information that I need. Then prim is equal to zero. And UV is, in this case, this is just a curve, so F00 is fine. And the UV has to be in between 0 to 1, has to be normalized, so you can just use this as it is. Now, <coughs> get the position and see if I got the right value. I'm going to recreate the points, then remove the path. Uh, why okay i shouldn't shouldn't have used one but i'm just referring to myself so i can just say like this okay so <clears throat> where is the point so here it is if you can see it mm -mm -mm. <coughs> make the point size a bit bigger like that 
Okay, and if I play it, so it's <clears throat> running along the curve based on the frame value. Okay. Those turns, those narrow turns might be too quick, but uh, for now, let's just go with it. Okay. <clears throat> So that's how the target moves, and let's place the plane to that position, see how it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, it's the plane is not rotating, orienting based on the curve, so we're going to need to fix that. To do that, <clears throat> you could sample the normals and up vectors as well. <clears throat> Just like you did for the position. Set the attribute to the newly created points, both n and up. Okay, now, okay, it's going backwards, so let's fix that. The easy fix is just, just rotate the geometry itself 180 degrees so I'll just do this here okay all right Now we can control the speed of this plane by changing either the frame size or the scale of this noise function. If you scale it down, the path will get shorter, which means the duration going from start point to end point will take a long time with slower speed. Or if you increase the total frame, it also slows down <coughs> because the path get longer. Maybe it's not really a good way to control the path, is it? No, I don't think so. Maybe I shouldn't use the fixed time frame <clears throat> for the length, but um, I'll just I should just do this manually. So that it doesn't really care about the current frame. I think it's better. So let's decide the number of frames to <clears throat> maximum thousand. Now I can increase this uh, the lengths by these integer values, and also can use this scale. Hmm, maybe scale could be fixed. Because it does, it just makes this longer or shorter. And smaller the value is, you get high density points. So pre should be better with the smaller value. 
there are some some <coughs> weird wiggling here about the roll looks like this so let's make this scales fixed instead of having this point zero zero one point zero one mm. <coughs> Yeah, maybe somewhere around here. Remove the scale. Try to make the number of parameters small as possible. Okay, that should do it. Yeah, I think it's good. Now, see how the target moves. Maybe I can make this moving faster, so that means I can shorten, no, make this path longer or make the frame smaller, like 500. Okay, let's go with this. Like a jet coaster. <clears throat> okay, now let's think I'm good with these path the way it flies around the space so now let's try to create the the missile par part the main part so in order to create the missiles the missiles has to follow this current <coughs> plane the running a flying target so we need to have uh, the point position point information of this target <coughs> so let's get that and we could get that information from here so this is the target position okay let's also save this To a today's folder. Now, <clears throat> in order to create a missiles, you need to have a launcher first, where to start off the rockets or missiles. So let's create that position as well. <clears throat> Now it has to be close enough to the plane, I guess, to reach it. So it should be within this bounding box, which is determined by this wrangle and specifically this size here. So I guess we could use this information somehow. And this is indicating the size of the bounding box. So this is 25. So 50 is more like a size of the bounding box on X direction, Y and Z direction. Okay, so let's add a new points, which I'm gonna use it to indicate the starting point for the rocket launcher then decide the point position based on this value here so I'm gonna copy this paste it here just gonna do this randomly and see if it looks good and multiply everything by 0.5 so that will be 25, 25, and 25 on X, Y, and Z. Place somewhere around here. <clears throat> so it's on the corner of the bounding box. It might be interesting to move the launcher <clears throat> in real time or in the animation, but for now, let's fix the position 
where it launches the missiles to here <coughs> and create a bunch of uh, <coughs> launch a bunch of rockets from here and which goes toward this flying target so <coughs> to do that I'm gonna use a sub solver Solver. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, as a starting point, I am going to connect this to a second input of the solver. <clears throat> Just gonna create the new points inside a solver um, <clears throat> without referring to any initial inputs uh, other than this uh, starting point for the launcher or we also need a target point position so let's also connect that to the third input okay <clears throat> so i guess that's uh, those are the two informations that i need in order to calculate in order to create the <clears throat> rockets or missiles okay so that's good go inside a solver and Let's start by creating a simple <coughs> code for the points uh, to be created in specific uh, duration or specific sequence. <coughs> for now, let's think about in specific um, <coughs> time on specific uh, timing, the new rockets being launched from the position the initial position, <clears throat> then all those rockets are going toward to the target. So initial position coming from the input to this one, and the target position is this one, which moves based on the frame. <clears throat> so I'm, we're going to use these two informations to create a new rockets. So. <clears throat> First, I'm going to connect the point wrangle to the, maybe not the point wrangle, but mm, I should use detail since <clears throat> I want to create the points one by one, I think, uh, <clears throat> based on the frame. So connect the second input which is the initial position for the missiles <clears throat> okay so let's make a conditions when to create the missiles and what conditions to create the missiles <clears throat> let's say i'm going to create the missiles based on the frame number so if the current frame number calculate with the modulus equal to zero. <clears throat> so every five frame, let's create the missiles. Maybe I can parameterize this. And start with five for now. And, and we are going to create a new point. Now we have to also decide the point position and this, this point position is coming from this second input. So let's get that information. There's only one point for now. So let's just get the first one. Now the new point has been created <clears throat> here. Let's apply some point group. We might need it later. So let's call this rocket. All right. Okay, so let's check. Currently the point 
it's going to be created on the initial positions but it's not going to move at all so we need just need to check here if new points being created let's check the geometry spreadsheet and run the code okay so the new point is being created every five frame looks good but nothing is moving yet so we need to fix that let's also merge these two so that we could check both the points and the plane where's the plane where is the plane okay here we go maybe the plane is a bit too small to check I'm gonna color this brightly for now <clears throat> gonna call it this red and make it really brightly red okay now it's obvious where it is <clears throat> all right maybe it's also small let's make it second two times bigger all right now <clears throat> let's make the points fly around um, let's make those missiles that i created go forward to this <clears throat> target next okay so now i've just created the rocket it's time to make them fry fly so i'm going to use the point wrangle to do that i'm going to refer to this moving target as a second input <clears throat> and create some simple um, particle agent system based on the the idea of boys maybe it's much simpler the bun than the boys because there's not much agents uh, <clears throat> in this uh, system so first of all you get the target position which is only one right now so you can just say zero <clears throat> from the second input now I'll call this target position now the current point position you can access with that P so the direct you can then get the direction between from the current point position of the bullet or the rocket to the target position by creating the subtraction <clears throat> like that okay now uh, after this mm, you could probably it's okay to normalize this if you want to use the distance between those two points then you shouldn't normalize but uh, I'll just go with the normalized value <clears throat> just meaning I'm just going to use the direction <clears throat> information to make this fly to make this fired now <clears throat> I'm going to use more like a physics way to move the points so I need a acceleration value and velocity to move the point position so first I'm going to create acceleration and using this acceleration to update velocity and then used in using this velocity to update the position that's how it works <clears throat> in terms of the simple physics so let's create the acceleration first based on this direction I'm gonna name this ACC um, ACC target and multiply this direction by the acceleration speed so let's use some constant value <clears throat> as a parameter not sure what's the right value for the acceleration value so let's start with 0.2 okay 
Now, <clears throat> after uh, having these accelerations, it's time to update the velocity. <laughs> and in order to do that, first of all, the velocity has to be updated <clears throat> in an iteration in every frame. And so every point has its own velocity value as an attribute. I haven't created one yet, but let's just try to access it. If it doesn't have anyone, then it'll just re create the new attribute with a zero value, initial initial value. In this case, this is a vector value, so zero 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 vector is going to be created if it couldn't find any. <clears throat> now, I'm going to update this velocity by acceleration target, just like just by adding it just by adding the acceleration to the velocity okay now <clears throat> after doing this if you if you keep adding the acceleration the speed is going to be going to go too fast in some uh <clears throat> in some range uh, and, and it's going to reach like a uh, speed of light or something if you just keep doing it so you have to limit the maximum speed at some point <clears throat> in the physics mode based on the gravity or something like that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's assume, uh, let's also set the maximum velocity value by uh, normalizing the velocity multiplied by the <clears throat> minimum between the current current velocity speed or the maximum velocity speed so this will limit the velocity speed to this maximum size not sure what will be the best maximum so let's keep it one for now might be too fast might be too slow not sure yet Okay, <clears throat> so now we have velocity, it's now we can update the current point position based on that. First I'm going to update the velocity attribute with the new one, then update the point position with the velocity <clears throat> by adding it to the pos point position. Okay, which will update the point position toward um, the target position hopefully because the velocity is being created by the acceleration and the acceleration is being created by the direction with from the current point position to the target <clears throat> so let's see what happens okay so it looks too artificial, but yeah, it is creating the points and all the points are following the target. Maybe the speed is too fast. But overall it looks fine. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> what I don't like is that every bullet is uh, firing in the same speed. Maybe I might want to change the speed. <clears throat> uh, to make it a bit more randomized and also um, might want to limit the maximum speed a little bit so let's ma limit the maximum speed to point 8 and also uh, make the maybe uh, make the acceleration speed a bit randomized <clears throat> this one here okay so not sure mm, based on maybe the point number and the frame might be might do the job <clears throat> so I'm going to add another value here like noise and use the point number 
with some large seed multiplied plus some frame based value multiplied by some speed uh, scalar then multiply by the acceleration speed now let's see what happens with that <coughs> Okay, so the speed got a bit randomish. I guess it's a bit better. <clears throat> it looks still weird in the end, but uh, for now it's okay. The next thing I want to do is to create the trail <clears throat> for each missiles, just like you see in the <clears throat> examples. So the create a Creating the trail itself is pretty easy. You can just use something like trail right after the um, solver. Increase the number of trail length, then connect it with polygon opened. And just by doing that, you can easily create a trail. Like that. Let's make it 30 or something. See what happens. Okay, starting to look good. Now, because <clears throat> every point is being added every frame, every five frames. So you're going to have like a limited number of uh, bullets in the end. So you don't really want that. It's gonna make it really heavy, and it's, it doesn't really look natural uh, somewhere in this kind of conditions. <clears throat> so I might uh, need to reduce the number of uh, rockets based on some conditions. And one of the conditions that I could think of is when the rocket reach really close enough to the target, like in the radius of one or something. In those cases, maybe we can make those bullet or rockets being exploded. <clears throat> okay, so let's try to create that conditions here. And also, let's try changing the acceleration target value to see what happens. If I make this increased, tries to follow more. Yeah, tries to duck or tries to turn really fast if you have a high number here. If you have a low number here, it takes time to rotate. So it's going to take a little bit of time to follow because you need a lot of time to <coughs> rotate. But also gives you a really interesting like turning effect, which might look natural. So combining with the speed, maybe there are some good numbers in order to make it look better. Maybe that, that was too fast in this case. It's going too fast, and so it's just going off the target really fast. You need to find the right balance, but if you make it too slow, there is a chance that the rocket is not going to reach to the target because the target is uh, flying in some constant speed. Yeah, in this case, the rocket is flying too slow. <clears throat> so you need to find a good balance between the acceleration value and the maximum speed. Yeah, so maybe these value might be good. Okay. For now. <clears throat> now let's create a collision detection. If a, if it, if the rocket goes too close to the target, then make it explode. Mm. So 
let's call it these. So this is the target. So I'm gonna use this <clears throat> to check if the rocket is really close to the target or not. And I'm going to create a detection in the <clears throat> very first uh, <clears throat> step. So I mean, it could be at the end, but I'm just gonna do it in the first step. So I'm going to use the point wrangle because I want to check every points, which is currently set as rocket. Okay, and may connect this target point to the second input to check so that we could check the distance. Okay, so <clears throat> the target position could get like this <clears throat> and we can we can get the distance between the current point position of the rocket to the target <clears throat> and we can now make a condition if the distance is less than the collide distance or, or explode explode distance or something like that make it explode let's start with one <clears throat> okay so if it's less than one then let's set the group to the current rocket exploded and also remove the rocket group like this okay and as soon as it exploded I don't want to make this point moving anymore so by move, removing the rocket group it's not going to be called with this uh, move wrangle which I'm going to filter it with the rocket group okay Yeah, let's try this. So I'm not sure if it's been deleted or not. Can't really see if it's that's happening. Maybe the distance is not close yet. Close enough. Let's make the collision distance a bit bigger so that we could check, at least check. And invalid group rocket. Oh, really? <clears throat> oh, because this is on the first frame, because there's no rocket group. It's fine. Okay, let's try with this. So, I just made the collision detected distance to 5. Okay, as you can see, some of the lines being disappeared because it's been corrided. Okay, now I guess I need a little bit of effect so that I can see that it's been exploded. <clears throat> so let's create some sphere on those position where the point has been exploded <clears throat> make the size uh, of the sphere a bit bigger a bit big okay so we know where the point has been exploded by getting the exploded grouped points here and those are the point that has been set as exploded. So we can make, we can copy the sphere to that position. <clears throat> so that we can check when it has been exploded. 
Okay, let's check. Play. Okay, yeah. So we do see the explosion is happening. Now, <clears throat> keeping these uh, spheres on the same positions with the same size is not really looking good. So let's also animate these exploded explosions <clears throat> uh, so that it looks like an effect, which we can replace it later with something else as well. Instead of sphere, maybe uh, we could just use another particle animations for the explosions, something like that, or my um, some <clears throat> props, anything. So, but to do that, we need to define the animated uh, informations to those explosion points, exploded points. So as soon as we have exp made the point exploded. <clears throat> Let's give some time based value which goes from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, which can be used as a scale value or alpha value or something like that. Okay, so <clears throat> let's define how much the explosion is going to live. So let's create a duration attribute, which could be an integer value, I guess. And set point attrib. Uh, explosion duration with this integer parameter. So if it's 100, then it's going to live 100 frames <clears throat> until it disappears. Maybe 100 is too big, so I'll make it 20 for now. And implicit oak should have used I. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> now that I have set the explosion duration, I need to make this uh, decreased by one in each frame, every frame somewhere. So let's have that <clears throat> conditions as well. So after being exploded, let's update this explosion duration only for the exploded group, maybe in the end, this case. Explosion animation filter it with the exploded <clears throat> and update the explosion duration subtract by one for each frame until it becomes zero <clears throat> so let's also clamp it with the zero is the maximum is always zero becomes negative or if it becomes zero maybe we could just delete it but I guess it's not a good idea to delete because we are using trail here if one of the points deleted within the simulations the trail is just gonna mess up so it's not a good idea to delete the points but instead I'm just gonna keep the scale to zero meaning I'm going to make it invisible. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to convert this uh, 
explosion duration as a p scale for this point. So p scale. <clears throat> I'm going to fit this current explosion duration, which is in between 0 and 2. We can go back here to get this information. Let's have that as a parameter as well. Then make it 0 to 1 as a target remapped value. <clears throat> okay, so in the start, you have p scale of 1, but then slowly goes to 0 based on this time. <clears throat> uh, in this case, using 20 frames to make from 1 to 0 for the p scale. See what happens. And let's also make the initial size a bit bigger in terms of the <coughs> explosion. All right. Now I can see some basic explosion happening. All right. Um, you can also control um, the way it, the way scale changes because right now the scale changes in linear, <coughs> linearly, which doesn't look natural. Uh, in initial, the size will is uh, really big, but it quickly just reduces the size. In reality, I guess so. <coughs> We could also have some curve map to this duration here. Something like like using the power functions <coughs> or use the CH ramp, something like that. <coughs> Let's see what happens. Now this is more like it. It just quickly goes smaller with those power node power functions. Okay. <clears throat> so this maybe we could also have it as a parameter, but I'll just keep it as it is for now. Let's try with four. See what happens. Yeah, this is more like it. More like uh, fireworks. Maybe it's up to you. So I'm going to make it parameterized. Pow. <clears throat> I'm going to go with four my case. Now at this point I have a bunch of parameters already created in several places so let's gather all around and organize this a little bit. See what kind of parameters we have in this moment. <clears throat> First of all the target. So we have the target path Just drag and drop the target related parameters. Let's name this target pass seed target pass size this is target pass length Okay, let's separate it. What else? Um, for this one, maybe we want to replace this later with some other geometry. So I'm going to connect with a null node. <coughs> uh, 
of some colors. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, so we might also want to change the the target. I mean the bullet launching position as well. In this case, maybe we could use uh, make these 0.5 as a parameter. So let's have vector three to determine the point position for the <coughs> rocket launcher. Okay, let's copy this one of the parameters, paste it where 0.5 is, and let's redo the copying to all Y and Z, replace this to Y here, replace this to Z here, okay. Okay, currently on the center, which you can remove this based on the ratio of the bounding box size. All right. <clears throat> Could also go negative. Okay, <clears throat> next. Go inside a solver. Let's open up the parameter interface as well. Go inside a solver and so we have a condition when to create the missiles. So, well, or I'm I'm just saying rocket. So let's just call it rocket. Rocket um, launch timing. It's the frame value. Okay, and moving parameters. So we have two parameters. One is the acceleration speed. And one is the rocket maximum velocity. Okay. And we have explosion conditions so so this is the distance to the target and duration explosion duration <coughs> what else we have the explosion speed, speed power. All right, <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's about it for now. Mm. Do we have anything else? Nope, I think not. Oh, we have the explosion size as well. Let's also bring that explosion size, which we can either set it as a P scale or the size of the geometry, but maybe it's better to keep the P scale in between zero to one for ease of use. So let's just set the sphere size. Okay. So we have now a bunch of parameters we can control. I'm not sure if you can see it clearly. Okay. And try controlling, like if I change the rocket timing to one, it's gonna launch the missiles every frame. Alright, 
seems working. Uh, if I make the rocket maximum velocity to two, it's going to run really fast. Like that. <coughs> okay. So it's working. Acceleration speed to one makes it turn really fast. So it doesn't really look like a rocket. More like a insect. Mm. But so yeah, maybe mm, two five might be a good balance. <clears throat> Okay, what else? Uh, explosion distance, if I make it to two, does it still explode? Yeah, somehow. By B, the speed is a bit too slow to catch up. Maybe I can increase this a little bit. All right, we'll go back this later. And I'm just gonna make it three. And explosion duration is, I think it's fine. Explosion speed power, fine. Explosion size, fine. All right, <clears throat> so let's uh, create additional conditions here. Um, one of the things that I don't like is that sometimes all those swarm of rockets are being too close to each other. That's not really realistic. If it's if they are too close, they might just gonna <clears throat> like explode to each other by touching to each other. So let's create uh, one <clears throat> smart conditions for the modern rocket so that it will try to have a distance between the other rockets. <clears throat> Maybe at least like one or two or point five in terms of the distance between the rockets. So in order to do that we need to have additional force being applied to each of the point looking for the neighbor uh, rockets and try to go a bit far away from them. <clears throat> try to have some space between them. So that's also related to the concept of boys, the separation. Okay, try to have some space between the boys, the agents, based on the distance. So that's what I'm gonna implement. Okay, and I'm gonna do this on this move rocket code, where we were making an act moving acceleration. In order to add the force, you just need to create additional accelerations and add it to the velocity and update the velocity by adding all those additional accelerations and finally clamp it with the maximum speed. So the first one is acceleration for uh, going forward to target the second force acceleration for separation <coughs> between rockets. Okay. So in order to do that, you need to have a neighbor rocket information from the current point positions. So first, you need to have uh, the distance information, how much you want to have a separation. So let's create a <coughs> parameter called sep dist, which is going to be used as how much you want to have a distance between other rockets. It's make this one for now. 
not sure what's the right value for this yet. Now within if the if there are any rockets within this search distance, then you have to have a separated a separation forces applied to the current point. So to search for the points within this range, you can use new points function. <clears throat> So what's the parameters? So geometry, point group, point, maximum distance. So we're gonna look for the point group called rockets. <clears throat> and the current point position is P, at P, and the searching distance is sep distance. We don't need to <clears throat> uh, limit the number of searches, so just gonna go with these. Or maybe if there, if you're going to have like a millions of rockets flying around at the same time, maybe it's better. You could limit the size, maybe limit to ten. <coughs> I'm not sure. Maybe we don't need it. Maybe you will need it if you have a massive amount of rockets. Okay, then loop through all the points. There is a chance that you're getting the point of yourself, so you need to <clears throat> skip that one. And in case of new points, the self point is always the first point, so you can skip the first one by looping from one. <clears throat> now, get the point number. get the point position and get the uh, direction from the <clears throat> target point, the closest point to the self point position. So self point position minus and pause will be the direction. And there is a chance that we're going to find many like targets or many uh, neighbors. And in this case, we want to use the distance uh, to use it as a weight. If it's really close, then we want to have more forces to separate from that point. If the distance is far enough, maybe the <clears throat> Uh, the weight could be less than the closer one. So <clears throat> we need to get that weight, calculate from the distance. So let's do that by, uh, first of all, in terms of the direction, I can just normalize it. And in terms of the weight, I could calculate the distance between the current point position to the end new point position and <clears throat> subtract separation distance minus distance because if the distance is equal to zero then you want to have more weight if the distance is equal to equal to <clears throat> if the distance is equal to separation distance then you want to have less weight and also wanna <clears throat> I also want to regularize this so <clears throat> fit zero or in this case I can just say the distance sep distance 1.0 to <clears throat> 0, 0. Yeah this will do. So I have just created the weight in between one to zero. Right. Now <clears throat> Let's create the vector outside the loop called total direction. <clears throat> and inside the loop, I'm going to uh, add total direction with direction multiply by weight. <clears throat> okay. And in the end, you get. <clears throat> Uh, direction 
where it's being affected by the close distance points. All right. <laughs> so, mm, and next, I want to convert it into acceleration in the end. So, mm, <clears throat> let's do that by first of all. I think I also need to have a total weight, or maybe I can just normalize it because this is just a vector. And then you create a new acceleration called acceleration sep. Um, <clears throat> created by this total direction. I guess I shouldn't use direction here because it's already being used here. It's not really nice. So let's call this set distance, set direction, set direction, and total set direction here. <coughs> okay, multiply by a ACC set. In this case, I'm going. I'm not going to use a noise uh, to randomize the value because this is <coughs> this happens randomly <coughs> based on the distance. So I don't really need to care about the <coughs> randomness of these separation. So I think I can go just go with constant value here. Okay, I think I have some errors here. Total sep distance direction. Okay, so <clears throat> I have now acceleration separation. So it has to have some balance between the acceleration target and acceleration separation. So let's go with 0.2 for now, a bit smaller than the going forward force. Then <clears throat> now that I have the acceleration, I can now update the velocity with this. And the rest is all the same. See what happens. Okay. Hopefully we are having some separation between those bullets or rockets. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm seeing it much. Gotta make sure that this is working correctly. So let's make some exaggerated value here, like separation distance to five. See if it's really working. Okay, yeah, I think it's working. You can see that the distance the separation distance is having a really high value. Yeah, so uh, yeah, doesn't really look good. So let's uh, update that. And let's have that as a para new parameter. <clears throat> so this is based on the rocket information. Let's have separation f between the explosion and the rocket. Let's have another separator here. <coughs> rocket sep dist. And rocket acceleration. So change this one to follow speed. Okay, let's see. 
So we have rocket separation distance. Let's call this 1.5. Let's make this equal to the acceleration speed for the following to the target. Think. Okay, that guess that's better than last time. Mm. Let's make the speed a little bit faster. This one a bit slower. one a bit faster hmm. find the right parameter is a bit hard well <clears throat> okay now uh, let's also have some additional parameters, or additional conditions where uh, the rocket explodes uh, <clears throat> with uh, some life value. If it's running too long, then it just explodes by themselves, uh, <clears throat> self explode based on the time. That might be additional conditions that I need in order to reduce the number of rockets in a space you don't really see, you don't really want to see rockets running forever and infinitely so need to have some time lifetime so let's define that i'm going to define the life value when the new missiles new rockets been create, created <coughs> here I'm gonna call this rocket and let how do I call this <clears throat> set point attrib life upt <clears throat> and let's call this life okay maybe making them making the maximum like 100 let's go with 50 for now so using this value as a number of frames if it runs 50 frames then then it just explodes so which means we need to decrease this life by one every frame so let's do that in the end life drain <clears throat> for the rocket life is being decreased by one <clears throat> yeah this is it uh, and once it becomes zero or negative we could make it explode in this explode node so coming back here, we could add additional condition here. If it is uh, if if the life is more if it equal or less than zero, then it, it could also explode. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see this is if it's gonna work. So you can see that the bullets are being exploded before it's reaching to the target. So maybe fifty is not it's a bit too fast because it doesn't really reach to the target yet. So we, I guess we need to increase that value. 
let's have that parameters as well so life life rocket rife where should we set that somewhere on here rocket life there's another parameter that actually I want to set which is the length of the trail so let's have that as well Okay, so we have two new parameters. One is the life. Let's make it 100. Let's also make the trail longer. Where is it? 50. Or even 100. All right, I think it's getting better. Maybe the trail is a bit too long. Let's make it 50. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's getting there. Now, <clears throat> right now it doesn't really look dynamic yet because we are looking from some perspective view. But we also want to make it look dynamic. So let's try to control the camera value as well so in order to make it look uh, <clears throat> uh, cool. So <clears throat> to do that, I am going to place the camera close to where the launcher is, maybe to the exact point where the launcher has been placed so that we are looking like that. And also make this camera looking forward to the target and see what happens. So I'm going to create a camera and to for the position I'm just going to copy the point positions of this add node here. Copy it. Paste it to the camera. All right. <clears throat> Now, in terms of the rotation, we need to calculate the Euler rotation from the looking direction. So to do that, um, <clears throat> uh, what I would do is to first create a quaternion with vex uh, from the looking direction. <clears throat> then look forward direction and then convert it into an Euler angle. So in order to do that we first need to determine how the camera is being placed. So let's check that first. So let's make the camera rotation 0, 0, 0 starting with 0, 0, 0 direction and if you look at it, if you look at where the camera is looking at when the rotation is zero, zero, zero. It's looking at the negative direction of Z axis. Okay, so we need to remember that. It is looking at the negative Z direction. So, <clears throat> in order to rotate this camera so that it will look at the target, in this case, this red one, we need to first create a rotational quaternion going from this direction to this direction. 
then we can convert that rotational information into an Euler angle and place it here. So <clears throat> let's do that. We could go back here. We can relate this point and this point to calculate the camera direction. So let's create the point wrangle. I'm going to connect the, the launcher point position to the first input and the target point to the second input. Then get the target. There's only one target, so I'll just say zero. <clears throat> Direction will be target minus at P. Let's normalize it. So this is the direction we want to look at okay, for the camera. And the camera is currently, the current camera direction is set 0, 0, negative 1. It's facing 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 1. And the target direction is this one. So you have we have current direction and the target direction. So we need to have a rotational quaternion going from this to this. We could get that by um, <coughs> using a function called dihedral. So from current direction to target direction, we can get the rotational, either rotational matrix or quaternion. In this case, quaternion is better we, because there is a function called quaternion to Euler, which we can convert this quaternion into an Euler angle. So <clears throat> like this. Now we need to have the angle in degrees. We need to make sure this if this is a degrees or in radians. So let's check. Quaternion to Euler. Okay, we need to set the order. So I think the default is X, Y, Z. So I think that's the things that I want to use. So quad zero. Okay, let's check the angle vector and seems like this is in radians. So let's convert it to degrees. Now we have now a degree angle x y and z and this is the value we want to place inside a camera parameter rotation parameter so in order to get that value we need to use expression so let's create a null node so we can access this node <coughs> from the camera And we want to access the point attribute, so we're going to use point. Inside geometry, there is a one called camera info. And the attribute, the point number that we want to access is zero. There's because there's only one point, and the attribute we want to look at is the angle. And the first one is the x. Okay, getting correctly. And the second one is the y third one is the Z. And let's check if the camera is facing the correct direction. Look at look at it together with the <coughs> uh, plane. Let's check. So yeah, I think it is rotating correctly. Now if I look at look from the camera, looks like this. It's not bad. 
But in order to make it more dynamic, we want to change some focal lengths. Make it really wide. That's more like it. And we also want to make this new clipping close to zero. And uh, okay, kind of a missing those uh, trails because the camera is pretty much at the same point where the launcher is at. So <clears throat> we need to fix that as well because we want to be able to see those launching, the starting launching lines these ones but at this specific camera positions we cannot really see it it's being trimmed uh, <clears throat> so in order to fix that uh, one possibility is to change offset the camera position a little bit to the back or left or right or <clears throat> we could also change the tr launching position as well. Right now, actually, it's <clears throat> um, trajectorying from a single point like this, which might not be a natural thing to do. So instead of trajecting from a single point, what if I have something like a turret turret and for example let's consider the point of this circle is the where the uh, the launching position for the rockets and so you have like 12 uh, holes <coughs> uh, to launch the rockets and maybe we could launch the rocket and circularly <coughs> based on the timing. It might be more natural <clears throat> and in terms of the, the look and the timing and also in order to look from the camera. For in this case if you even if you have placed the camera in the center, the position the point position of the launching position has been offset a little bit from the camera so the camera should have be able to see those points <clears throat> hopefully so shall we try that and one thing I also noticed that uh, is that if I look at the trail the initial point position of the trail is not being placed on the exact point but it's been a bit offset it from the starting point so uh, I think I want to also fix that. Let's go to the new create new rocket. This is where I create it. <clears throat> and as soon as being created, this has been moved with the velocity. So that's the reason why it the initial point already has some offset. So <clears throat> in order to avoid that, what I could do, what I could do is to move this create new rockets in the end. Uh, so meaning I could move this in the end. Somewhere right here. If I do it like this, <clears throat> all the trails starts from the starting point. Yeah, this is more like it. Okay, <clears throat> now, so instead of launching from one exact point, let's try to launch from these points of the circle. <clears throat> okay, so to do that, I want to place this here and also facing toward the target might make more sense. So let's also do that. And in order to do that, we need to have a 
normal and up vectors apply to this point, which I don't have it right now, which should be related to the target position again. So <clears throat> let's have that. Maybe we could actually use this camera direction node for that point. Yeah, <clears throat> that might make more sense. So since it's already been accessing to the target position. <clears throat> oh well, yeah, well, after all, it's not a good idea to just combine different uh, meaning different codes in one node. Maybe this that's faster, but it's hard to read. I'm just going to create one another node. <clears throat> For ease of organization, for ease of <coughs> uh, organize. So connect it here, connect target position to the second input. Mm, up in normal. Okay, so get the target position. get the direction. Direction is normalized. Target minus current point position. <coughs> so this could be the normal. Right. Now for the up vector, mm, you could Currently, I don't have any up vectors, so maybe I don't. I'm not gonna set any up vectors for this one. Just gonna use normal direct direction <coughs> to place this circle to this point. So let's try copying this circle to the points. See what happens. Okay, so looks good. So camera looks like this, and the tu turrets look like this, and it should be facing the target. All right, and I want to launch the missiles or rockets from each of those points <coughs> circularly, I guess. Okay, looks good. Now. Instead of connecting the initial points, let's just connect the circle here. Going back inside, go back to where we are creating a new rocket. And this is where we need to change to get the initial point position. So we have a circle coming from the second input here. We have a bunch of points from the second input. So let's get the number of points first. <clears throat> okay. This indicates the num maximum number of points coming from the second input. And instead of using zero, we need to iterate this value by one based on the frame. And if it goes over 12, in this case, then reset to zero. So we need to create an index value. Since I am using modulus here, instead of using modulus, I could make it like a division, make one of the value float, then use floor to make it integer value. This will create uh, <coughs> it uh, iterating value from zero to zero by iterating by one <coughs> for each newly created missiles or rockets. Then finally calculate the modulus, calculate the remains with the maximum number of points. We could reset the index to zero if it goes over twelve. Then we could use that to get the point 
position from the second input. All right, this will supposed to create a top turret like launching, as you can see here. There you go. And if by doing this, I think I should be able to see those <coughs> trail from the camera. Okay, well, let's uh, Okay, and we could now control like the size of the turrets or something. See what would work best. Mm -hmm. We could also make this divisions higher. Like that. Okay, getting better, I guess. Uh, let's fix it with the uh, 16. So we have new parameters. Let's have those as well. <clears throat> so we have turret and camera. So first of all, the turrets or the launcher size. Oop. And I don't know how to call this, so I'm just going to call it resolution. Okay, and what else? In terms of the camera, do I have any parameters? Nope. Maybe the, the focal length might be another parameters you might want to change. this <clears throat> camera focal length now <clears throat> I think I have enough uh, information to create the <clears throat> so-called tunnel circus I think it's time to actually visualize it with some like thicknesses or pipes for the rendering so let's have poly wire connected to the trail and try to adjust those parameters Okay. And let's also care about some balance between the size of each of the elements. Okay, not sure what if the size is okay or not. Let's have this like six point five color it really bright for now to check.
shaded. I might want to change the camera positions a little bit because it's a bit... I don't really want to see those kind of fans from the camera. So <clears throat> let's change this a little bit, shall we? Let's make this positions a bit more randomized based on the target positions. <clears throat> shall we so mm, to do that how shall we do it mm. <clears throat> the direction da, 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 da. okay let's see how I did it lay <clears throat> So going back to the camera info, I think I want to change the camera positions a little bit as well. So <clears throat> let's think at P is equal to. So <clears throat> currently I am getting the position from the source. So, what if I move this point, move this direction toward the target a little bit? Maybe using T direction by two or something. looks okay did it changed not sure <clears throat> yeah it did change okay see what happens Well, maybe not that good. <clears throat> mm, how about in negative direction? I'm not sure if it's really at the right position okay so <clears throat> camera also supposed to be at this point position but it's not that is because I am not actually referring to that position yeah I realized I need to use point function just as I did here. So I'm gonna do like this. <clears throat> there you go. Now, let's see. Let's also create an output so that I can always render the final one. 
Oh, this doesn't look good. Let's move this to positive direction. Okay, <clears throat> better than last time. Yeah, more it looks more dynamic. I don't really want to see the the section of the trail, but uh, instead of that, everything looks fine. I'm not sure how I can avoid looking at the <laughs> section of the trail. Maybe I could just increase the turret radius for that. Mm, where is it? <clears throat> Not sure. Maybe I can make the camera position close to the target as well. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, I'm getting sick. <laughs> All right, looks nice. Well, now <clears throat> starting to look better. There are still a few things that I want to do. Mm. First of all, <clears throat> let's give some. Hmm. I think I'm forgetting something. Um. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see, rocket life to 100 is fine, rocket lengths 30. <clears throat> hmm. Full acceleration 2, what happens? Yeah, it's getting somewhere. And I think um, I also want to add last one conditions to the uh, this <clears throat> rocket. And that is that is what was it? Forgot. Huh. Mm. <clears throat> uh, what was it? <laughs> totally forgot. So I have two acceleration value, right? Oh yeah, yeah. One last parameter that I want to add here is to control the direction <clears throat> of this path, uh, just like it moves like a laser. So the laser moves like straight line, but right now, as you can see, the lines moves like curved trail, which is good. But in some case, I want to move it like a uh, laser. Since let's see how I could modify this so that it might m looks more like it's look like a laser. <clears throat> and what are these points? I'm also curious. Maybe these are the leftovers, devries, exploded devries. So we need to also delete those. Mm, <clears throat> those are coming from where? Here? Nope. Here? Yeah. So <clears throat> I, th I think these are the points which has <clears throat> zero lengths in terms of the trail. So we could, I think we could remove that by using clean. Yeah. They're gone. So <clears throat> in order to make these angle 
or this the turning controlled we could go to the move rocket node <clears throat> and modify this acceleration or velocity a little bit so that we could control the turn how it turns now if you want to move the points if you want to move if you want to have the straight trail straight look trail then what you could do is to limit the angle difference between the new velocity and the old velocity if the angle between the new velocity and the old velocity is less than let's say 30 degrees then update the new velocity with the old velocity direction which is gonna create a straight direct direction <clears throat> and once it's go over 30 degrees then that's when you can turn to that direction and that might be a way to make the rocket turn straight uh, straightly <clears throat> let's try okay so in order to do that we need to calculate the angle between the old velocity and the new velocity so this is the new velocity the old velocity is at the attribute right now so the angle of new <clears throat> Uh, two vectors can be calculated using a cos dot normalize to velocity so this will give you an angle between 0 to pi 0 to 180 degrees between the vectors and if the angle is let's say less than 45 degrees then the new velocity direction is same as the old one multiplied by keeping the length of the old uh, new velocity <clears throat> else you can turn to that direction so yeah let's say if this is gonna work okay going outside check you can see that the line starts to turn with some straight angle which in turns start to hard to find the target because the, the, the angle is kind of limited so we also need to fix some parameters for that if you want to use the really straight turning angle like this you think you need to have more acceleration for that <clears throat> uh, law rocket so meaning you need to increase the the accelerate the rocket full acceleration speed higher maybe one maybe more yeah starting to follow so that's one thing you could try <clears throat> maybe in this case you could also increase the maximum velocity now you need to find the best 
parameters for that. It's a bit it's getting hard to find the target. Maybe 45 degrees is a bit too large in terms of the angle. <clears throat> Yeah. Or you could also update some conditions how it turns. Okay, if you look at from the camera. Looks more like a tron. Hmm. Maybe I could increase more. Yeah, starting to have more like it. Yeah, more like it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So <clears throat> the balance between the angle limitation and acceleration speed is really important, I guess. Now let's have that angular limitations to the parameter, to the new parameter. Let's organize this a little bit. So, acceleration is this one. Mm. Let's separate her here. <coughs> And the angle limit should go <clears throat> let's make it float. have this somewhere around here rocket fell angle limit let's also increase the maximum speed to 10 for this one for this one and the maximum velocity. Maximum velocity is, okay, this one and this one is more like a global velocity parameter. So let's also have to separate it. Mm, this one as well. Well, in the end, I'll just gonna combine them together. All right. <clears throat> Okay, and the angle limit, I'm gonna say 100 is the maximum. Okay, let's see. So right now, it was the angle limitation. Previously it was 45, so let's limit to 20, see what happens. Yeah, you still get a feel of straight line, so it looks good. Limit the acceleration speed to a bit slow or slower. Yeah, still good, I guess. <clears throat> One. All right, starting to get dynamic. So you need to have some balance between them. <laughs> 1.5 might do good. Mm, it's pretty hard. 0.2. Yeah. 
somewhere around here. Well, <clears throat> anyway, both of them are okay. So, and if you make the angle zero, you're gonna have more smoother trail. <clears throat> And in those cases, you want to really limit the acceleration speed. This is even too large. Yeah, somewhere around here, <clears throat> I guess. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's also control the uh, the opacity of the trail so that um, <clears throat> the one close to the rockets, which is at the point where it is running, have higher transparency, I mean higher opacity, no higher translucency <clears throat> and what the one that's close to the tail have more transparency or thinness or well, <clears throat> whatever value could be used for uh, could be used for the thigh size could be used for the color could be used for the fading or anything <clears throat> In Houdini, I'm just going to try to draw it as color, but uh, when I'm going to bring it to a blender, I'm going to use that to control some shading value. <clears throat> so let's have color based on the uh, tra trails position, point position, <clears throat> which I can control it somewhere around here I guess yep and maybe I could also use fuse to remove unnecessary points so 115 becomes 586 <laughs> now <clears throat> Based on each primitive, I can have a, a fading value, probably by using resample in the easiest way. Uh, if, I, if you want to also increase the number of points, you could use resample as well. If you don't want it, you could also uncheck this maximum segment length which will keep the current point number. And instead, I'm just going to turn on curve view, <clears throat> which will create a volume between zero to one based on the position of the points. And I'm going to color those points based on the curve view. <clears throat> so this is going from dark point, dark color to lighter color. Yeah, based on the position. Now, let's also make it brighter in the end. Uh, didn't work. <clears throat> okay, I'll just go one. And see from the camera. Wait a minute. Is this correct? Yeah, so based on the trail positions, it's changing, it's fading. Okay, I think it's fine. Also, <clears throat> the thickness of this trail should be parameterized. So let's have that 
So all the rest of the parameters is based on the visualization. Thickness. <clears throat> hmm. Here. Trail thickness. Is that it? <clears throat> okay. Mm. And for the explosion size, I already have it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's getting there. <clears throat> so I think most of the setup has been done in Houdini side. I think it's time to actually quickly render it. In this case, I'm gonna try using EV on Blender because that's pretty easy to create a, a stunning image. <clears throat> okay, so, so far so good. Let me know if you have any questions at this moment. Um, <clears throat> if you want to know, if you want to add any additional features to this, let me know. If you have any idea whatsoever, let me know. <clears throat> or if you have any questions or feedbacks, anything is welcome. For now, I am going to try to send this to a blender with the settings <clears throat> via so-called Alembic <clears throat> file. So to do that, we need to prepare some groups. <clears throat> so let's do that. Okay, so first of all, this is explosion group. And for the explosion, there is a point when the P scale is equal to zero. So those uh, points where the P scale is equal to zero, we can just ignore it. So let's delete that. <clears throat> Add additional delete here. And look at the p-scale attribute. And if it's really close to zero, just delete it. Oop. Hmm. Just deleted everything. Why is that? So p-scale. Yeah, there is one that's larger than point zero one. So okay, have to do this here. Okay, this should do the job. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to call this group explosion and also want to make sure that I have no other group. So I'm going to use group delete to delete all the rest of the groups. <clears throat> okay, do the same for the trail.
this case I'm gonna call this trail okay do the same for the plane just this one and I want to add another pro object <clears throat> which is the point the which is the the rocket itself yeah I'm gonna just create some simple tube but maybe later you can just replace it with other thing other geometry same for the explosion one <clears throat> and for this rocket geometry geometry I want to place this to the point of the rocket which is coming from here so let's get that get rocket Am I getting it? No nope. points. Yep. And I also need to have a normal direction to this point. So let's copy the velocity to the normal. <clears throat> Just copy the normalized velocity. Right, and copy two points. Check if I'm getting it. Hmm. I don't see any. Okay, um, I need to remove the P scale. For this one, there you go. Uh, how is the orientation? Nope, doesn't look good. That's really correct. Let's rotate this tube 90 degrees. Yep, and the size must, I guess, must be related to the thickness of the trail so let's copy the trail thickness paste it to the tube radius scale make this radius one and a little bit larger than the trail thickness multiply by 0.1 or something or I don't know, 0.5 and let's color it to see how it looks gonna make it bright blue more like a electric plug flying around the space catching some Tron like object which is also interesting um, <clears throat> okay so it looks good just gonna go with this as a test all right now I also need to specify the group for it delete the group and recreate it with a name I'm gonna call it rocket okay that's it I think <clears throat> I got everything it's time exporting it 
as an alembic and since I also had I have this camera I want to also export this camera information as well <clears throat> so that I have this exact view in blender so to do that just use file export alembic and um, choose the file name <clears throat> how should I name it output then export everything yes accept and export the frame range and just export everything Okay, it's done. Let's go to the Blender and try to visualize what I have just exported. I'm going to import uh, first. Let's save this. Import the alembic, which I have just exported. Where is it? I don't see it. Mm -hmm. Did I export it to the? Where did I export it? Okay, I think I'm missing the extension. Let me go to the directory. <clears throat> there you go. Now go back to Blender, import Lembic, and let's test. Also, I don't need this camera anymore, so let's delete it. So let's test playing it. Fine getting the animation all right that's cool okay and look let's look from the camera wait uh, wait a minute I think I deleted the wrong camera I think I need to delete this one and use this one instead There you go. <clears throat> mm. All right. So after this, it's just a matter of shading. So we're almost done. We can go to the output. Oh, I think we're missing the <coughs> groups. I guess it's not recognizing the group. Uh, for each geometry that I made so maybe I need to make the material instead so I'm gonna create principal shader in in Houdini in this case I have four rocket trail <coughs> plane and what is it? What was it? Uh, trail, rocket, uh, do, do, and explosion. Okay. Let's also make sure we have groups. Mm, maybe I know why because in the first frame there is only one group applied 
there's only playing groups uh, <clears throat> alive here and seems like blender is only reading the first frame which groups exist so in the first frame either rocket trail or explosion doesn't exist so that's i guess that's why it's being ignored so let's create a dummy object on each of these group <clears throat> like create a circle make a triangle make it really small so that people can see it and have it as one of the <clears throat> rocket explosion or trail just as a dummy so that we can we have at least one uh, object with the specific group Okay, and so for now, let's try to avoid creating material, see if it's going to work. Okay, wait a minute, what happened here? Okay, so we have now at least one object for one group in first frame. Hopefully this will do. If that, if it does, I'm gonna delete the material. Export Alembic. Replace the output. Export. <clears throat> Right, going back here, remove the one that I've imported. Import the Alembic again. Let's check. Okay, now I have four groups. So that was it. I needed to have uh, some some object applied with those groups. So I think I don't need these material. <clears throat> I'll delete it. Going back here. It's time I set up some materials for each object. I'm going to use the shader mode yeah, with the EV. Let's check if I'm using EV. Yeah, EV. And let's <clears throat> have Bloom. Okay, so and for the background color, I want to make it black. So let's have this black. Let's also hide the grid. Well, let's just keep the grid for now. Okay, so for the trail and for the explosions, I want to make it like unlit uh, especially for the explosion I want to make it transparent so and maybe bright enough to make it look like it's been set as explosion so going into the <coughs> material tab click the explosion use node I want now I need a node editor here so let's open up the shader editor for the specific material <clears throat> so this is for what is it explosion so let's increase some emission for the explosion make it really high like that See how it looks. All right, not bad. Also, let's see if I can in how alpha can affect. Alpha doesn't really affect the emissions, so maybe I'll just keep it as it is. Wait, the alpha only works if I change the blending mode to 
alpha blend but still yeah maybe this would do some job <coughs> hmm. although I realize I don't have information to control the opacity or transparency of this explosion right now so right now I only have constant value for these explosions well I'll just keep it as it is for now <coughs> mm, have you also then let's go to the plane plane I'll keep the plane color simple so blue maybe I can increase the subsurface I guess I need a light <coughs> to lit I'll just be um, <coughs> lazy to use the emission instead of using subsurface reduce this a little bit <coughs> hmm. well <coughs> I don't know just go with one just gonna go lay easy So for the trail, I'm also going to use a mission. Also, I'm going to use the color information that I applied when I exported through Alembic. So I am going to create a node <coughs> called color attribute access to CD. And there you can access to the color information. Maybe I can connect that to emission. Yeah, as a color information. Also, I could use this to as a tra alpha information. So, also have another node. Mm separate XYZ to deconstruct the code the deconstruct the color get either X Y or Z and place it alpha then convert this shader to alpha blend which will fade the <coughs> trail on the starting point position and probably increase the emission strength a little bit higher then finally going to the rocket let's also create the <coughs> rocket color mm, again I'm gonna use some emission for this getting too lazy here bluish let's change the plain color uh, skip the yellow <coughs> let's see what happens Okay, play it and remove the grid. Oop, stop. <clears throat> okay. 
Oh, let's tweak this a little bit. Going back to the trail. Maybe increase the emission strengths a little bit. change the color for the trail maybe I can also multiply oh vector math multiply this vector with a color not this LGB <clears throat> hmm. maybe Making this animated might be interesting. Huh. That's too cheesy. <laughs> okay, so to do that, I could use hue, saturation, value, and also use time oh, frame. Why am I getting empty node? Interesting. What's that? Huh. Oh. Do I need to? Use? Uh, mm. I actually don't know how to use this one. Mm. Yeah. Totally forgot how I could use the time based value. I thought there was a node for a time. What was it called? Oh, I see. Uh, okay, so this is just a group. <laughs> okay, my mistake. Thank you. Mm. So I am not sure how I could access to the frame information or the time information. <clears throat> Particle info. No. Input attributes, ambient, bevel, camera, color, curve, fresno, geometry, da -da -da. parameters. T -t -t -t. Hmm. I'm not sure. Used input numerical values in another node in a tree. <coughs> Shader, no. Nah. Group, frame, reroute, script, black body. Well, I guess I could use script. Doesn't look smart. <clears throat> Is this uh, Python? <laughs> Not sure. I haven't used this. Can you use this? No. Nope. Okay, let me quickly search how I can use time based value in the shader <coughs> editor. Okay, so why not use 
GPT. <coughs> Blender, switch to shading workspace, and the shader editor you make sure you have material you want to work with selected. Press Shift A to open and add to menu. Do, 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 do. Uh, navigate to input value. <coughs> right click on a value, find a value, no, do, 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 add driver. Oh, okay. Let's try. <clears throat> value right click on the value field add driver oops driver properties oh sorry driver properties is expression <coughs> frame divided by FPS for security reasons automatic execution of Python script in this field it was disabled this may lead an expected big and expected behavior is this the Python behavior huh, huh? not sure Ah, okay, I need to use, I need to actually use the real number here, 24. Okay, so does it work? And use self unchecked. Okay, it's unchecked. Click on update dependency to refresh the driver. All right. So let's see if it works. <clears throat> Not sure if it's updating. I don't think it's updating. Oh, uh, shop frame in a value input. Oh, really? Thank you. Let's try. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> this is it. This is it. Now I could have a math node to divide it with frame rate and <clears throat> just limit this with another divide node <clears throat> so this will give you 0 to 1 uh, within 1 second so actually uh, what I could do is to have another add node maths 24 for the frame rate and also create a value like 10 multiplied to determine this is 10 second and then connect it here so for 0 to 1 for this calculation means it's from 0 to 10 seconds now I could use the modulus. Uh, where is it? Do we have it? Uh, add, subtract, divide, 
round cell truncated fraction modulo yeah <clears throat> with one so that it goes back to zero and make it to hue let's see let's see okay i think i'm missing something so this being 63 divide it and hopefully hue is in between 0 to 1 right oh oh mm -hmm. maybe I need to start from some value like this yeah <coughs> might be too bright how's that all right that'll do so it's updating the color based on one rainbow color in 10 seconds <clears throat> Got it. Okay, well, rest is just uh, testing. I mean, nothing special. Let's make this white. Ah, my eye, my eye. It's too bright. Let's reduce the bloom. Ah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> anyway, looking good. I mean, there are tons of controls you could have in this setup, so already, maybe, and you could add more if you want. I'm looking for a, some screenshot. <clears throat> okay, let's see how this one looks. Mm, well, <clears throat> it looks better in the animation. Doesn't really look good on image. <clears throat> anyway, that's about it, I guess. It would be nice to set the target pause as color <clears throat> for each missile's trail. It would be nice to set the target pause as color. Target position as color for each missile's trail. <clears throat> oh, I see, I see, I see. Ah. <clears throat> I see what you mean. So using, based on target position, change the trail color. That might be interesting. Let's do that. So we could bring the target geo, no, not this one, target position here. 
which is within the range of this bounding box that I set here. <clears throat> Uh, where is it? Yep. So, <clears throat> kind of a need to convert this value into a color uh, value. So, shall we do that? Um, so, if I want to change the color of the trail, I could go right after I set the black and white color here or mm, if I want to have it as an additional value mm, maybe I could use also maybe I could also use UV as well <clears throat> alpha channel since I already have this uh, curve view which I want to keep it so <clears throat> somehow I need to mix them so to do that that's uh, what will be the best way <clears throat> Hmm. Hmm. Well, actually, I could just get the hue value instead of the color itself, probably. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe not. <clears throat> What's important to determine the color is saturations and the brightness and maybe I could <clears throat> forget about the brightness just set the hue and uh, <clears throat> saturations okay so first of all I'm gonna convert the position uh, to the color by accessing to the position and also want to access to the bounding box information to fit this point position based on the maybe I could just change everything at once hopefully from minus two positive and zero to one let's see what happens Oop. Okay, so I guess it's changing the color. All right. And what I want to get is the hue value and the saturation value from this RGB value. So. <clears throat> RGB to SHSV. Right. 
Now, I could um, have you in saturation, then pass it to here. Accessing to the color. <clears throat> All right. Okay, sounds like, look like a laser, but this is not the actual color that I want to use. This is just the information. All right, so, I think it's done. Let's exp export this again. Right. And replace <coughs> the geometry and the camera. Not sure if I can replace it. Nope, didn't replace it. And just gonna delete the old one. So do I, oh, wait a minute, <clears throat> hmm. think I am missing geometry, don't I? What happened? Not sure. Oop. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, it just crashed <coughs> anyway so starting from the start oh shoot didn't save it oh well and why am I missing copy hue set huh I think I connected Something wrong, copy hue set. What's that? This one. Why am I exporting this one? Not sure. Let me. Reset the simulation, see if I can export it. Oh, you can try recover it. I didn't know that. Let's see. File recover. Last session, don't save. Do I have it? Cool. Well, <clears throat> that's cool. Thank you. Thank you. So, where was I? Yeah, trying to import back the <clears throat> material. I wonder how I can keep those materials that I uh, edited and place it to a new <clears throat> geometry. Not sure how, but let's try. 
going to keep it and import Alembic. Okay, so this is the new geometry. Oh, yeah, seems like it's been updated. Ah, that's good. That's good. So I can now delete the old one. This one as well. Save it. Play it. And let's update the trail based on the information that I wrote. Uh, oh, hey, Jason Manchin, thank you <clears throat> for the super chat. I'll rewatch later and help check a message on Patreon. Uh, sorry, I didn't check the message on Patreon. I'll do that um, later. Do, do, do. Where was I? So trail and the X is the alpha or the gradient value and y is supposed to be the hue value <clears throat> so let's connect y to the hue and let's connect z to the saturation and for the value i'm gonna keep it one to make it bright enough and connect this to here so this will <coughs> I use the supposed to use the okay it's not changing <coughs> okay maybe I'm doing something wrong so this is the trail not really changing the color. Oh, that is because I didn't change this one here. Hmm. So the initial color has to be something, I guess. <coughs> Okay, now is it changing slightly? Yeah, slightly it's changing, I think. Huh. Hmm. wonder why it's the color is not really fixed that's weird the color is supposed to be fixed but it's gradiently ah well that is based on this alpha channel I guess so that's not the problem but oh and I'm seems like I'm multiplying wrong value here <clears throat> so I just gonna connect it here still doesn't look correct <clears throat> ha Mm. Oh well. Even if I don't have alpha, 
the weird thing is that it's gradiently changing the value wasn't supposed to happen or is it something I did wrong <clears throat> So there's only one hue, there's only one saturation, so there's supposed to be just one color. So all CDG is all same, all GDB is all the same. So if I'm using saturations and <coughs> hue, supposed to have the same color for every trail but it's not somehow yeah so is hue oh yeah I'm getting so I'm having different hues over the points interesting this after this nope I'm having all the same green color it's weird also the blue color as well huh what I'm getting X Y and Z the same value somehow Why? I don't know. If I just connect it here, just getting black and white. Or did I delete it the the old one? Ha. Huh. Let me try this again. <clears throat> Things looks a bit weird here. So this has the color. Oh, oh, this is coming from the dummy geometry. It doesn't really matter. Hmm. Interesting. Let's save this. Export it. Alembic. Export. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, let's do this again. I'm gonna try to delete the geometry. File, import, alembic, output. Okay. Okay, so I have the same setup. Now, this already isn't correct because if I'm just using the color itself, looks like this it doesn't look like that hmm hmm so <clears throat> I guess I'm doing something wrong what Anybody know why this happens? I 
maybe I need to transfer the color to vertex maybe I don't know <clears throat> try let's just try export <clears throat> also need to make sure that the output is being replaced with the new one yeah so this is supposed to be the new one yeah it should be okay Now, let's delete this again. Import. Wait, I think I'm looking at the different folder. Shoot, that's the reason. <clears throat> okay, now <laughs> material is gone. Oh yeah, there it is. And oh yeah yeah, I'm getting the right value. Finally. Finally, yes. So the color. So I wanted to use this as a hue, this as a saturations, this as a color and x as a alpha channel huh <clears throat> it's not really changing the color is it maybe the saturation is too big no no yeah 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 <clears throat> maybe so instead of saturation let's connect this to value all right <clears throat> that'll do and seems like the explosion material is gone so let's remake it this one is easy just a huge emission Right, plane exists, rocket doesn't exist. Gonna make white. So hopefully the color is changing based on the target position. Maybe I could reduce the saturations. Let's just say it's okay. Uh, I usually export from Rob Alembic these and use mode Ogawa. I see. Rob Alembic <coughs> or use it inside ROP network 
<clears throat> yeah, this using node is better, I guess. Because you can <clears throat> use it with the tops. Yep. I'll do this method. Okay, thank you. Um so I guess that's it for today. Um <clears throat> So the main topic was to create a homing missiles or rockets or lasers <coughs> using the concept of agent based system. <coughs> Adding some constraints like explosions when get close to the plane or <coughs> uh, based on the life cost. Also, um, there's a separation forces applied to each of the <coughs> uh, rockets <coughs> to have some separation to each other. And you can uh, control the speed and forces, speed and uh, <coughs> acceleration value, as well as the angle limitation and so on. So enough parameters to control the various types of <coughs> rockets, I think. Hopefully you could try it out by yourself as well. <coughs> mm. So, and you can actually, this one actually moves in kind of a close to real time because the implementation is really lightweight. So you can try out many parameters during playing the animation. Some values don't work uh, during the simulations, I realize. Uh, where was it? Explode. This one is supposed to come here. <clears throat> uh, so let me try several parameters and I'll end this live stream. <clears throat> Let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll just end whatever timing I feel like. Okay, explosion duration, 20. Rocket life. If I make this rocket life to 10, I think it's gonna die really fast. You don't have much trail. That's not interesting, is it? Let's make it 100. Yep. Better. Mm, trail lengths might be interesting longer. <coughs> want to have more snaky like movement so in those cases the balance between the acceleration for the target to the target and the separation is important if I make the separation really fast And also the separation distance a bit bigger. I can't point five. Now I'm getting plain sick. I 
All right. And a little bit of angle limitation might be interesting. So 15 degrees. <clears throat> and those cases, I need to increase the the acceleration, maybe like 0.5. That might be too fast. 1.0. Uh, still too fast. It's turning too fast. There you go. All right. <laughs> well, getting too <coughs> complex, too messed up. Maybe somewhere around 0.9. Uh, okay. Maybe. And now I realize trail is a bit too long. Yeah, I can play, play with this all night. I'm just gonna end it somewhere. Okay, <clears throat> mm. so <clears throat> wrong covered. Rhino Grasshopper versus Sodini, which better? Uh, well, the purpose of those offers are totally different, so I don't think there's yeah, I don't think you can just compare it one to one. <clears throat> it's really based on your purpose. If you want to create a product design based on the precisions, you use Rhino for sure. Rhino Grasshopper for sure. If you want to create like uh, <clears throat> animations for gamings or modeling for gamings or animations for v movies, you use Houdini. So, <clears throat> can't really say which one's better. You need to know both. <clears throat> you can learn both. And you can just combine these both tools in different situations. <clears throat> yeah. Knowing one software is not enough. For sure. Alright, I guess that's it. So thank you for those who have joined till now. I am going to finish this live stream for today and hopefully I'll be able to do something next week as well. Okay, so see you sometime next week <clears throat> and good night. Have a nice week. <laughs>